Why will you go to media and say a salary of political office holders, National Assembly of that matter? I don't receive the money that they publish in the front pages of newspaper in the name of advocating for your standard living condition. Don't be give wrong and lie information about institutions is done inside the public against. We are concerned about the trade union, but Mr. Speaker, we should be more concerned about the two, over two million Nigerian population who are suffering, 200 million, who are suffering, who doesn't have food to eat, okay. who cannot buy kerosene, who cannot pay school fees for their children, who doesn't have shelter to stay at home. We should remember, we right. must be proactive, hold that bill, adjust it, Call for public hearing. Stakeholders should consider Thank that. You. If we have done our job, federal government will not be doing what they are doing now. The prices of commodities in market, the standard living condition of the people is sympathetic. So it is very terrible. And here we are fighting for trade union living condition. I agree they constitute 13% of the population of this country. But go to equity with clean hands. Do not, in doing that, suffocate sectors like hospitals, where if it is not wrong, Nigerians will lose their lives. The primary responsibility of government is protecting the lives and properties of its people. If the action of trade union, which is legitimate, negate those essential services, okay. I don't think they will right. be doing fear to the people of this country. Finally, finally, sir. Can we say that as a government, we have succeeded in carrying out that primary purpose of government. Have we provided security for Nigerians? Have we taken care of the welfare of Nigerians? The answer to the two questions is no. We have severally talked about security, including today. In fact, it's as if one Nigerian life today equals to one minute silence. Now we're coming to the issue of welfare. And for several years, Nigerian workers have been complaining and crying concerning the issue of salary. Who earns 50,000 in this country and you think that a person can truly depend on a salary? Let's not deceive ourselves. It is not possible. How much is house rent? How much is your transport fare to your office and back home? And so we expect a Nigerian worker to earn as low as that and continue to serve this country. Let us stop playing the ostrich. Let's be realistic. Let's carry out our role to provide for the welfare of the citizens of this country by providing living wage for the Nigerian worker. It's, it's really unfortunate when you hear a government talking about minimum wage and shying away from living wage. This House has resolved in the past that there is urgent need for living wage to be considered for Nigerian workers. However, having said so clearly, I will join the move of the motion to commend the Nigerian workers for shelving the strike in the interim and allowing an opportunity for discussions and reconciliations of these issues. As, as, although we commend them for doing that, I will also use this opportunity to also say that sometimes when we embark on some of these actions, we should not overstep boundaries. The area of switching off power in the entire country as a way of protest should be condemned. It is not proper, it is not opposite. Who are you protecting? People are in the clinic. Some persons, their lives depended on power at that moment. And you switch off the national grid. That was going too far. Whilst you have a good cause, whilst you're on track, you also need to adopt a proper process and procedure in pursuing that cause. So I will urge this house to please, with the speed with which we pass the national anthem, that we should also recall the Minimum Wage Act, reconsider it, and with that same speed, pass that act, and ensure that we give the Nigerian worker a living wage in that act. 
That is the only way we can show solidarity with the Nigerian workers. We have the powers to make laws. Let us make that law. Let us pass it with the speed of light and allow the executive arm to either implement, assent, or refuse to assent. Where the executive arm refuses to assent, I think that will be the first call on this House for us to override Mr. President and ensure that that minimum wage act is passed into law. I will therefore urge us to please support this motion and also add that the minimum wage act should be recalled and reconsidered with the speed of light. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me echo some of the words of the minority leader. I think we need to take this one step further. I am in alignment with everything he has submitted. We actually have to criminalize the part where we shut down the national greed. Shutting down the national greed is killing the same people we are protecting. The primary job that we have is to protect lives and property. There, you cannot go under industrial action and kill people legally. Because shutting down the national greed, that was just one too many. I'm sure a lot of people died in the past few days of shutting down the national greed. We have to criminalize that. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, and finally, while we are all here, we support so many good initiatives. I think we need to take this. If an average Nigerian cannot buy a bag of rice in a month, and we're talking about 60,000 Naira for minimum wage, I think we need to reconsider that position and actually do something that actually brings dignity to Nigerians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a very important motion. We are being paced as a country with the issue of insecurity. And then the next issue that is bedeviling Nigeria as a country, in my opinion, is that of corruption. We cannot truly fight corruption if we don't pay the Nigerian worker a living wage. And asking for payment of living wage, which we have done variously in this house, if I could recall, about a month ago, the minority leader of the house, with myself and some other members, brought a motion on payment of living wage, not minimum wage. Uh, and I believe what we are asking is provided for in our Constitution. Mr. Speaker, I want us to look at Section 16, 2D of the Nigerian Constitution. It says that suitable and adequate shelter, suitable and adequate food, reasonable and national minimum living wage shall be provided for the Nigerian worker. So paying a living wage, and we, I know everybody here understand what living wage means. There is a difference between minimum wage and living wage. What the Nigerian worker deserves is a living wage. And I believe the federal government will see into it and make sure that a Nigerian worker is given a living wage in a, in a such a situation where he will be free to do his job. And when that person is then caught doing corruption, he can be properly and adequately punished. I therefore urge on all my honorable colleagues to support this motion with the speed of light. I so submit, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. What happened on Monday was quite unfortunate. For the fact that Nigeria, we are aware that labor have been raising this issue of natural concern. But the government of the day pretended that 
what happened on Monday that we are now portioning part of the blame to labor over the shutting of power. After all, the laborers can no longer enjoy even the power because it's not meant for the Bujajis. It's meant for some, some person alone in government. Because what are they earning? That they can also enjoy life. So, to me, even the light that was shot, I was in support. Hmm. The aviation industry that was shot, I was in support. Because that is the situation. When a man okay. can no longer feed his family, what do you expect from that person? All right, thank you. Let me guide you. Thank you very much. You see, Mr. Speaker, I, I want your protection, please, sir. Okay, round up, round up. So that I, I can guide you. You know, the parliament must speak in terms in line with the laws. Mr. Speaker, again, the, the inflation, why we consider the to increase the minimum wage. I think I also want labor to be sensitive to certain issues in the country. Recall that the last time that the, the minimum wage. OK, round up, round up, round up. We have to give other people opportunity. Let me learn, Mr. Speaker. I need your protection. The inflation rise up to a particular level. So why? We want the minimum wage to be increased. We also expect that we should do it in line with the situation in our economy so that we don't overshoot the inflation. And the government should be very fast to resolve this issue because the one week is just tomorrow so that we don't go into another, or uh, we don't postpone the doom day. Thank you and God bless all of us. Thank you. Let me guide members of the parliament.